Welcome back to Hour 3 of the Nutramedical Report for Friday, the 10th of August. And we have John Moore. His show is 7 to 9 a.m., Monday to Friday Central Time, on the Republic Network. TheLibertyMan.com is his website. Ann Morrison, our scientist, here to talk about earthquakes, volcanoes, and solar galactic events. Uh, her website is Homeland-Defense for number 4U.com. In the bottom of the hour, we'll have Christina Consolo dropping in. Give us an update on what's going on with the Fukushima issues. John, what's the latest? Well, the latest is, Dr. Bill, uh, one source reporting that uh, at 29 Palms, which is a Marine Corps base uh, in California, more than 100 miles from the ocean at at 2,500 feet above sea level, they're installing uh, natural uh, gas-fired turbine generators to make electricity to supply the whole base, digging new wells, putting in new uh, wastewater treatment plants, and uh, bringing in a lot more equipment and supplies in preparation for whatever they're getting ready for with a November 1st a deadline. Now, about an hour after that, I had a second source call me up and say, "That's not. it's not just 29 Palms, John. It's all bases that are, all military bases that are not close uh, in altitude or distance from the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, or Gulf Coast. And they all have a deadline of 1 November to get the uh, natural gas turbines up and running along with whatever other modifications and improvements, infrastructure improvements are doing to make the place uh, completely uh, self-sustained for uh, years, if necessary. <clears throat> yeah. So that's what's well, latest. To me, that's uh, it. Just makes it, it's good hygiene. It's good preparedness. In other words, maybe the governor just getting their act together and realizing that, uh, like we talk, we're preppers. They need to be prepared for the fact here we're going to have a heat wave in the next few days in California. <clears throat> we said repeatedly, there's multiple reasons why the grid's not going to survive. Increased load, we saw it in India just a week ago. CMEs can happen. Uh, terrorist attacks, we know that they're doing testing for the last five years off of India, off of uh, in the Persian Gulf, the Iranians, shooting missiles straight up in the air. When you put a missile 50,000 feet straight up in the air, you're not doing targeting. There's no targeting. These missiles are designed to carry an EMP weapon. A very small yield EMP weapon 200 miles off the Atlantic or Pacific coast will take a radial 1,500 miles in any direction, electronic wipeout, clean slate, right. no the power. Higher, the no. higher the altitude, the, the broader the reach of the uh, EMP effect. Right. But they're also very concerned about a solar flare or a Carrington type event the mm-hmm. next six months. And uh, for those that's who don't very know, likely. It, yeah, right, very a Carrington very... event would be uh, a repeat of what happened in 1859, just before the Civil War, when we got hit by a solar flare. Now, we didn't have a power grid, of course, at that point in time, but we did have a nationwide a telegraph service, and those wires acted as antennas to direct the energy into the telegraph offices, which started fires. A similar event now would knock out our nationwide power grid and literally bring this country to its knees instantly. Well, what I've done personally, and I've searched out different options, number one, I put a 20-kilowatt generator increase to two tanks, so I have two 500-gallon tanks for propane. Secondly, I researched and found a company in Colorado that can supply lithium pyrophosphate batteries, which is the best long-acting batteries. They're light, powerful, non-explosive, and don't contain lead. Lithium pyrophosphate power controllers that can be hooked up to solar panels that I do not want hooked up to the grid. They recently ruled here in California that the, the uh, utilities have to pay a fair price but if, the, if you have solar panels linked up to utility, when the utility goes down, you don't have power. Right. And, we, and I can tell you right now, right, even over this weekend, the likelihood that we're going to have a power outage. We had two power outages, by the way, in the last three weeks. Some of them lasting just three or four hours, but they did last. Our power went out for two seconds. It, it was a transfer switch. It immediately switched on. We were right up to full power. Once I have my lithium pyrophosphate batteries, I can hook up a small number or a large number of solar panels. I can charge up those batteries. I can put a small uh, wind generator. Uh, the, 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 the power controller will basically determine the load and decide whether or not, oh, you don't need to turn on your propane generator, so maybe you only have it on when you have high load. And it just pulls either from the batteries at night or from the solar panels during the day or the wind when it's windy. So basically, that's the ideal system. You have to get planning to get off the grid. They're also planning to put... Agenda 21, smart meters on everything from gas, electric, and water, and <clears throat> they're pushing them everywhere. We had them here in the recent fair here in Vista, California, and I asked the lady who was talking about these, how great they are, 
So do you realize that these are not only toxic, but they're also increase the risk of fire because they put electricity down the power lines to actually determine what the power usage is. So if they're on a gas line, we found that the San Bruno uh, fire was probably triggered off by smart meters that are actually on the system uh, up the line. That's to put amazing. power into it. Yeah, no, not, not no. good. So I, I agree. I think that the, when people were kind of jumping to conclusions and there were uh, pe people out there that were asking me to come on when I said, look, I don't have corroboration of an incoming object at a specific date, but I do know it's coming in. I mean, even we have the reports from the public media of the senior astronomers in, in Brazil. I have my contacts in South America. You've been looking at it. You talked to McKinney. Uh, we know that the there's an object that Anne's going to talk about in a moment that we've talked about before. It's 197 feet across. It's calculated to come in on February 15th, my birthday, 2013. It's 5,000 miles above the surface of the Earth with a wide margin of error up to 2,000 mile or margin of error. Probably has a debris field around it with many other asteroids anywhere from the size of a Winnebago to the size of a refrigerator that will be coming in. Um, this could be very significant and if very it strikes an area and if you actually ended some calculations and I want you to tell us what you found in when you did your calculations about this. This is only one of many things. I'd say CME in 2013 a virtual guarantee. Somewhere the power is going to go out. It won't just be incompetence like in India where everybody's pumping because of a drought. It'll be a CME knocks out the power, say, in Europe or across the Midwest United States. And you lose equipment, so you're not back up in two or three days. You may be up in three or six months. Right? Well, that's right. The, uh, the Earth is so much bigger than this asteroid, and this asteroid is so close that... Uh, the uh, distance that they're estimating from the mathematical models is uh, 5,000 miles, plus or minus 2,000 miles, the condition is 4, which means it's a wide margin of error. And uh, because of its size, they're comparing it uh, on a Trina scale to a Trina scale 4, which is the same as the Tunguska event, which flattened uh, an area the size of the country of Luxembourg in Siberia in 1908 so uh this is a uh, this is one to watch and as it gets as we get as it gets closer to us as we get closer to february 15th uh they will be updating the the uh, trajectory and uh so we need to be alert that uh about where it's going to strike right now i am predicting that it's going to strike um someplace off the west coast of north america yeah, in fact, uh, I told you about the two visions I had last week, and one was a standing vision for 20 minutes in uh, downtown Tehran, and I, and I don't, I could describe it. If, if somebody knew downtown Tehran, they could maybe know where I was talking about, because it's between a university and a military base right beside it, and there were high rises near it, like apartment buildings or university buildings, and fuel air bombs were killing people. And the other vision was I saw a very narrow angle object coming into the North Pacific northwest of the Hawaiian Islands and it struck uh, off there and I don't know when it is whether it's this one or some future date but it was very vivid it was like whoa it's like now know. this is not an extinction level event um, no it, it, but it could create a pretty large tsunami it could create a tsunami and it could also create a lot of rain because it'll push a lot of water vapor into the air and that water vapor would be west of us of the United States, and therefore the the jet stream would carry it over the United States, and we might end up with uh, flooding. Yeah, we might end up with torrential flooding here in California. We, we and anybody who lives in California knows about flash floods. We had a flash flood warning just two days ago because we had some clouds that looked up in the sky. It looked like oh something bad's going to happen. So there's a warning here in Southern California. A flash flood is so much rain that falls out of the sky that literally the the, the, the sides of the these muddy hills that haven't had rain for months just decide to come right down on you and sweep away your home. It's crazy, but it happens. Back in a moment. Great to clarify that, but uh, it means that things are happening. The government's getting ready for something, and we just know that we need to keep our eyes open and ask better questions. Back in a moment. Earthquake Central. Scientists required, and tell us what's going on. We had the, a dupe, uh, double earthquake up in Yerba Linda, which is just about an hour north of here near Santa Ana, uh, four point something, and uh, 
What does that mean? We also had an earthquake in the extension of the fault zone called the San Andreas Fault down in the Baja California in the Sea of Cortez. The last time we had yeah, about 208 yeah, miles me, away, away, we had a pretty big shaking here in, in Vista. And by the way, we're about 60 some miles from the nearest fault line zone up in near um, near Palm Springs, etc., where it goes through the high desert. The fault mm -hmm. lines there aren't any near right here because we're sitting literally on a granite mountain at a thousand feet and behind us is about seventeen hundred feet and just about five miles east of us is Palomar Mountain up to six thousand one hundred feet so uh, it's it's different but the fault lines are further east of that in other words it's geologically different material um, but we're, well, we're, we're, we're due last, for something aren't we? Last April uh, 11th we had a doublet off the coast of northern Sumatra and one of them was an 8.6 and, and then an 8.2 were within two hours of each other. And then the next day we had a 7.0 at the top of the Gulf of California, and that's the one that you felt in San Diego. Then, uh, what was it, yesterday or the day before, they had uh, a doublet 4.5 in Yorba Linda. Now, Yorba Linda is not on the San Andreas Fault. It's on its own little fault line. But, um, but uh, the uh, lady from uh, Caltech said that it raised the expectation of a large earthquake on the San Andreas to a uh, factor of one in a thousand, which is yeah. a lo lot bigger yeah. uh, probability than they've given before. That's interesting because there's no specific, you know, equinoxes or syzygy perigee, you know, uh, close periods where the, the moon is closer or alignment of the planets. I wonder why it's all of a sudden getting more active. But yeah, well, we, we went after the 7.0 that occurred on the 12th of April this year. Um, the, the number of earthquakes in a week dropped from 400 to 200, and those are earthquakes over 2.5 magnitude. And they've been steady around 200 for the last four months. And now just this last week, it started to go up. It's above 200. Uh, the highest I've seen is 225. Now, whether that is because we're coming uh, closer to the sun or we're coming closer to the equinox, which will be uh, July 21st or 2nd, or if it's Nibiru coming uh, close to the solar system, I can't tell you. But uh, it certainly looks like August 17th uh, there could be a big earthquake, and I would say that San Andreas Fault is a target. Well, the amount of recoil stored in San Andreas is over 12 feet. If it moves six uh, inches, it will create a over nine level earthquake, which will be enough to destroy uh, sixty to eighty percent of Los Angeles and surrounding area. Uh, so, you know, if anybody's well, around during these major earthquakes and you see the overpasses swaying and falling over, or uh, they see the ground open up, they see the roadways become like uh, how can I say it, like one of those motocross things where you you know BMX bike where you have the up and down hoops in the road. That's what happened to the road. It was like uh, it was like waves literally appeared in the highway and the freeways. Yeah, and I, I do want to tell people to expect that if it if it's above an eight, to expect it uh, the shaking to last for up to five minutes, uh, and that's been confirmed by the FEMA folk here. Right. Now, one of the things that uh, people should be aware of is they should have, as we were part of this ten plus ten list, they should have tents and other things because they may not be able to go back into their home if it's bad enough. Even if you're a long distance, two or three hundred miles, and you're not the center of the damage, there might have been structural damage to your home, so it could fall later or could have some sidings occur because of the ground, right? Um, yes, and they also say don't go over any overpasses until this, they've been cleared by the uh, Department of Transportation. Right, cause, yeah, exactly. Now, um, <clears throat> I would say if I was going to put my guesses on the the emerging things that are concrete, number one, we know 2013 is going to be major CMEs. We know number two, earthquakes are increasing. The number is three, the H3N2 V went from 23 cases to 168 in a week, which means although they're in Ohio and Indiana, all of a sudden we're getting the emergence of a new uh, H3N2 with the H1N1 plague genes in it, so we've got a new uh, viral plague. We have the danger of an outbreak of war in the Middle East, the meltdown economy in Europe, and the famine, which is caused by the major climate shift causing a failure of our corn and other crops. So. They didn't just fail here. They failed in Paraguay and Argentina. They failed in, in they're failing in India where the drought caused them to pump all that water. Uh, what's your analysis of the timeline and what's happening here? Because it looks to me like we're going to face famine, power failures, economic disaster, and a war in the Middle East here real soon. 
Yeah, I think the next, uh, well, I would say the next six weeks and maybe the next six months are going to be a crazy time, and uh, people just need to be prepared. And uh, if an earthquake strikes and it lasts for five minutes, don't think it's the end of the world. Um, go outside and be in a safe place. Try to stay away from any kind of unreinforced masonry. I know of people... I know of a, a student that was killed at Cal State Pomona when an overhang fell on her during the uh, Northridge earthquake. So, you you know, look around and make sure you're not in, under an overhang or that you aren't by any power poles. Yeah. Cal State Pomona is not very far from here. And uh, as far as the <laughs> H3N2, it's a variation. Now, yeah. you know they put the H3N2 attenuated into the vaccine uh, that they gave out last year. And apparently, uh, people have become the mixing vessel. You know, it used to be swine well, were the mixing vessel. Well, apparently, some children have developed this H3N2 variation, and it looks like it's a little more transmissible. In other words, the laboratory is little children were, were injected with the vaccine, and the vaccine were given it was probably the live ones that were given by nasal spray. Right. They probably were not injection. They yeah, probably, probably were given spray, the yeah. nasal spray because that had the live attenuated uh, va- uh, yeah. virus in it. That's what you call plausible deniability. What do you think, John, as a logistic? Well, I, I agree. I mean, these, we've seen what's now virus and, and some of these others are clearly biological weapons uh, that they're introducing into the environment. Uh, it's causing great harm uh, to people, and, and they know how to do this and make it look like it's a natural event. And most people think it's a natural event. Well, natural events are really bad. I mean, I talk to natives that tell me every 300 to 500 years is a major tsunami on the subduction cascade zone off of Oregon and Northern California up to uh, to Southern British Columbia. Uh, it's about 800 miles long, I think, that subduction fault zone. And then we've got, uh, on the East Coast, we've got every three to 500 years is, again, a major tsunami struck from literally volcanic islands that break off in the Azores off the West Coast of Africa. These are events that you think might happen every half a million years or 10,000 years. No, every three to 500 years. That's, uh, as they say, that's doable. And then, of course, the sun. We have the Carrington event of 1859. Uh, the probability we had a, a, the Quebec hydro event was literally 1989, and that was one-third the power of the uh, Carrington event. <clears throat> we have the uh, one in 2003 that I think was one-fifth. It wasn't uh, geocentric or aimed directly at us. If we had, as uh, Mishu Kaku says, a direct uh, solar uh, storm that hit us <clears throat> in North America of the Carrington level, uh, our infrastructure, our power grid, our equipment, our computers, everything would be fried to a little crispy critter. We wouldn't be able to pump gas, get groceries, move trucks, uh, traffic lights wouldn't work. It would be social chaos. For years. Not, su- not surprising that the military are smart enough to actually get their own generators and get ready with extra wells and so on because... Uh, guess what? Maybe some of these military is listening to the Nutri Medical Report and John Moore's show on <laughs> Republic Radio. <laughs> the Nutra Medical Report, uh, and we've got lots of things going on right now. Uh, if you go to spaceweather.com, you can see that we're going to we're experiencing the Proceed uh, Meteor Shower. That's P-E-R-S-E-I-D, Meteor Shower. We're also seeing some very unusual Aurora Borealis activity, according to NOAA, and uh, well, a slow-moving yeah. coronal mass ejection that's causing a glancing blow to the Earth. Can you give us some more information about what's going on in terms of space weather? Yes, after the um, um, April 12th event, the the flare and then the CME, and that CME came in very fast. It had a lot of kinetic energy with it, and uh, we didn't get a full reporting ahead of time. But they did an after-event report that was published on uh, spaceweather.com or or NASA someplace, and what they said was that this particular CME that came in strobe the Earth with ultraviolet light to the extent that, and I believe this is, this is 
true. NASA shows a picture of Iceland uh, with the ice cap on it, and then four days later, the ice cap is, has been melted. It's changed state from a solid ice, which is the solid state of water, to uh, the liquid state of water, which is water. And uh, it all now whether it happened in one day or two days or three days or we only have pictures uh, for four for the first day and the fourth day. So how long it took it to do that, I don't know, and they don't know either. Uh, but it was a tremendous amount of energy that came down to the surface of the Earth with this uh, flare. And uh, there were other impacts with it. It created ground currents. It created some problems with uh, with the uh, power plants. And um, uh, CME effects included uh, mag oh, the uh, magnets that, that you use to find out where you are. They fluctuated momentarily. So this was a CME that uh, they didn't forecast ahead of time that it was going to have all these effects, but it did. And so we need to really be worried about a CME that would come in on the peak yeah. of yeah. spot cycle 24. Yeah, and I think that's coming up uh, in the next 6 to 12 months. I would say there's about a 90% chance of a CME knocking out power somewhere in the northern hemisphere in the next 12 months. And uh, it, occurs, it occurs anywhere, like Europe, North America. Uh, you know, it's going to knock out the power, and it's not also going to make equipment get fried, step down transformers, power lines, etc. And it'll be months and or years before those things are replaced if they have an in-time production and distribution for those, those uh, components. So, yeah, John can probably speak to that. Tell, tell us about that, John, because we have a situation of preparedness where obviously the military are getting ready. I mean, it, it, all the oh, they're, they're giving that, themselves six months. The uh, yeah. Department of Homeland Security's concern is the next six months, and they're giving themselves basically three months to get finished, uh, the 1st of November. Now, they also have access to information we don't, but we can hypothesize That's right. what that That's may right. be. That's right, they don't. But, we can, but knowing what we know is enough to uh, motivate us and help us to stop our procrastination. And uh, I know I procrastinate. I'm, I'm just like everybody else. And, and get up and get things done that have been procrastinating, and this is the time to do it. Well, you know what? Maybe now that we have Christina is not able to make it today, let's go through our 10-plus list again so we can kind of get people up to speed on preparedness, and uh, it may be worthwhile to do that. Uh, the, the first thing I tell people to do is uh, get yourself spiritually prepared because you may not be able to, to withstand the stress of what's going to happen, uh, even despite all the other physical preparation you try to do if you're not spiritually ready for what's, what could happen and how things could get way out of hand. Absolutely. I'm looking for my... Ten list yeah. here. I think maybe I've yeah. got it. Yeah, yeah I did. I've, I've logged it in, in as well, and I'm going to do an update of the ten plus list uh, because it needs a lot of work uh, to update it to the most current situation. But I'll do it verbally or on the other. The first thing, of course, you always mention is uh, we have our two Bev 200 pure water systems. They're in a tackle box. You can carry them in the back of your truck. You have a 12 volt battery. You can run off your battery of your car, and that pump will actually create water cleaner than distilled. That's the best system to have. It's better than the Berkey, the Cola Blue, or anything else. All you need is literally pond water. Uh, and even if you use these other systems, you want to sterilize it because you've got to make sure there's no toxic chemicals, radioisotopes, or other things. Because you can assume if things go crazy, there has been a nuclear war, there is a, little, a lot of debris in the air from an asteroid strike, or there's a lot of other toxic garbage. For example, most people are aware that if the volcanoes go off in Iceland, they release a lot of radioactive material as well as, as fluoride, up to 200 parts per million, which are pretty toxic. And it, it basically acts as an exfoliant destroyed crops across the northern Europe, and we think was many of the factors that precipitated the French Revolution. So uh, let's go down to the list. Uh, uh, water filters, and then right. number two, three. Are, are, I lost track. Are we on break or not? Uh, uh, no, we're not on break. Uh, okay. We're down to well, one a 30 caliber <laughs> rifle, 500 rounds of ammunition. Is a, For uh, each uh, adult, and of course the training to go with it. Uh, yeah. Number three, cast iron cook pots and skillets with cast iron lids, no glass lids. You can use them for a decade if they're properly taken care of. You need a truck or, or a heavy full size van, and preferably diesel, to carry uh, people, supplies, and equipment. Uh, next, uh, heavy canvas tents or four-season tents, not these lightweight nylon tents. They won't hold up with long use. Right. You may need shelter for yourself or for unexpected guests. Uh, next, we have 900, gra 900 pounds of grain per person per year. I, I am now suggesting a two-year supply. 900 pounds of grain is the average uh, a healthy adult will eat in one year. Uh, that is uh, about three 55-gallon drums full of grain. 
wow. properly stored so that when the weevils hatch out, they won't live in an oxygen-free environment. Uh, next, a comprehensive medical kit and, of course, a training to go with it. You're going to be your own paramedic. You're going to be your own cop. You're going to be your own fireman. You're going to be a lot of things. And without the equipment and the training, uh, you could watch a loved one die in front of you from a fairly minor wound. Yeah, you need to be able to deal with a sucking wound where you break ribs and somebody, something gets crush injury and they get a pneumothorax. you got to deal with closed or open fractures. you got to deal with sterilizing wounds. You have to be able to know how to suture things together, and you have to have antipathogenics like our Alamed, Alamax, Silver 100, etc. Absolutely. Uh, next on the list kits, yeah. is uh, our kind of generically heavy leather, high top boots. Get your boots and trousers and, and hats and shoes and gloves where the farmers and the construction workers get theirs. Uh, uh, don't go to a sporting goods store. Uh, their, their clothing and boots are meant for casual outdoor recreational use. They're not meant for long term. Uh, yeah. Manual labor, they won't hold up. Yeah, yeah I like the ones from. Uh, if you get the heavy, good, good ones from Kabilis, they're pretty good. Or from uh, what's it called? Uh, Red Wing is it? Uh, is one of the uh, Red Wings one of is uh, our our military grade boots. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can be very good. Uh, then we have uh, vacuum packed heritage garden seeds. Uh, learn how to do the gardening and get a good supply of heritage uh, non GMO garden seeds so you can save the seeds for the following year. Right. Uh, vacuum packed, of course. Right. Uh, one book I recommend is Holly Deo's Dare to Prepare. It's a virtual encyclopedia of preparedness. It's very well done, and, and uh, I do recommend it. Uh, next, we have the Paratrooper Bicycle. It's uh, the only full-size folding mountain bike. It's used by the U.S. Army and, and the Marines, uh, available at my website, thelibertyman.com. And, of course, a hand-crank AM, FM, shortwave, radio, uh, flashlight, cell phone charger uh, with the... Uh, Weather band in there. Uh, the ones I saw on my website have all those features except the short wave feature, but uh, it is AM, FM, weather band, a flashlight, and uh, yeah. cell phone charger, hand crank. Yeah, I usually recommend they also get some uh, two way walkie talkies that will go up to 50 to 75 miles. And if you can get a ham radio certification, that's a good idea, too. It is. And yeah. communications can be a matter of life and death. Yeah. And then uh, on this top 13 list, a radiation gamma ray spectrometer. I believe you have something that will work there, don't you? Dr. Yeah, we have those. Yeah, we have those available through our LES EMF. We have some links there. The ones we recommend are the Inspector EXP and the Inspector Plus. Uh, the Inspector EXP has an extra arm that you can kind of swing around to touch or bring it near things. Um, I recommend a greenhouse. You should, if you, in, you know, the one that I like is the systems trading one. You get it at Home Depot or Amazon online, put it together, or you can get hoops, we call a hoop net thing to have over your open garden. you got to keep the radioactive rain off if it ever gets bad. For power, I've got a Generac generator. I checked all the different things out. You don't want to be connected to the grid with solar. If you get solar, it's an add-on after you have a power controller with solar panels. Wind generator is an add-on as well. Uh, you want to have a roof water uh, collection and filtration system, and if you can, also put in a, uh, a well, very important. Group defenses in your own personal area. Uh, the Castle Defense System with Greg Evenson is a great one to get. You can Google his name, Castle Defense Training, and that's available on DVDs. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, of that list, we also mentioned uh, the idea of a solar oven. Uh, the list, uh, I'm going to do an update uh, this weekend, actually, of the list on uh, under wellness conditions. I want to go over some of those foods, two items. Uh, first thing is water, stackable water jugs, uh, usually five gallons ideal. You want to have at least three weeks of water. That means that's a lot of water. Uh, if you figure out a minimum of three to five gallons per person uh, per day, pasta and ramen noodles, rice, canned soups, meats, veggies, fruit, Popcorn, salt, you mentioned that before the break, John, or on the break. Spices for cooking, milk, condensed milk, cereal, brief jerky, turkey jerky, grains, ancient grains, whole grains. Uh, you mentioned the 900 pounds of grains earlier. Cooking oil, I recommend coconut oil and or butter buds uh, for cooking. Don't use vegetable oil for cooking, by the way. It creates trans fats and it goes rancid. Uh, canned nuts are a very healthy combination. Uh, dehydrated foods, we have uh, prepare-wise have the best packaging because it's mylar. Nitrogen flushed and oxygen uh, absorbers in there. Dried fruits, honey, cane sugar, baking essentials, baking powder, sugar, yeast, dehydrated juice powders, almond and peanut butter. They last a lot for years. Salts and condiments for meals, baby food, specialty children's food, and pet food because you don't want to forget your pets uh, when this happens. They have lots, always have extra two or three bags of dog food 
but you might want to have a lot more than that. You want to make sure you can, if you want to, get it in containers yourself, flush it with nitrogen, and uh, uh, and you can uh, store it for long periods of time. Now, be sure and take care of the pets. It's something a lot of people overlook is uh, making sure that cats and dogs and whatever have enough feed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, They can't just uh, live on scraps from whatever... Because no, it may not no. be much scraps, especially if you're having a dehydrated other food and you have small portions, just enough to keep you alive. Can, the amount of food you're going to have to keep you alive may be much less than you're used to uh, eating because in general our population overeats compared to our ancestors. Oh, yeah. Or many in third world countries. I mean, they could, an entire family in probably eastern China could live on what we eat a day. <laughs> so, uh, you know... This is what, let's talk about the timeline for a minute, John. What do you see as a timeline? You know, with all people kind of jumping to conclusions, what do you see as a timeline for this next say year? Well, I see the government in a hurry to get their preparations done uh, by the first of November. Right. And they're they're making uh, uh, some declarations inside the DHS that they're concerned that between now and uh, February, uh, six months, uh, that. Uh, there could be a coronal mass ejection that would knock yeah. out the power grid. Yeah, I think that there's virtually, uh, I would say, a 90% chance that in the next year we're going to have a major damage to the power grid somewhere in the northern hemisphere. 90%. Not a 5 or 10%, 90% chance. I'd say there's probably like a 5 or 10% chance of some asteroid coming down that could be bigger than a refrigerator or a Winnebago uh, that may be part of the debris field. It's going to be scary when this thing uh, that's 2012 DA... Uh, 14 comes by on my birthday next February, hoping that it won't ruin the birthday party. Uh, <laughs> and hopefully that we won't have fragments large enough to strike the Pacific and start a tsunami or to cause a major uh, rainfall that will cause you know mudslides and other things here in California and around the world. The biggest thing I see also happening is something that's right in front of our face, famine, extreme weather, the hottest July on American history record, the hottest seven months in American record. Uh, and people say, oh, see, that's pr- further proof of global warming. I'm thinking... <laughs> Well, yes, but not for what they think. Why? Not for what they think, yeah. <laughs> and the problem is also we don't realize it's not just hotter. We're getting tremendously higher ultraviolet light. The UV ratings, how high are they, uh, And Because we're seeing ratings in Phoenix and elsewhere that have never been seen before. Well, they've been up to 12 um, off and on in Phoenix. And here in, uh, in uh, the St. Louis area, they've been up to 10 and 10 plus. So uh, it, it's, a, uh, it's a real problem. Uh, the air is getting, the atmosphere is getting thinner, and so the UV comes yeah. through the uh, ozone well, holes here, and reaches uh, the surface. Well, it's already uh, almost 10 to 3, and believe it or not, the UV level here live in California, because I have a special weather uh, service that actually is linked directly to my computer, is already still at 8 and very high at, at literally 10 to 3, or 9 minutes to 3 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, By the way, yeah, I saw right advertise was, some wristbands that will turn color when you've got too much UV on oh, your yeah. body. And who, where can you get those? Uh, where can you purchase them? I don't know. I just saw them advertise. I didn't see them advertise. I just saw a segment so, on them on, uh, on uh, KTLA5. Probably can uh, go and search on Amazon, the place where you can buy anything in the universe. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, I yeah. think they were selling them for people on the beach, so they might be in swimwear. And by the way, oh, and my other thing that I want to add to that three plus list that's going to be there is I think a, a, the idea to to not throw what we call food that we call uh, that you've cooked a night a lot of food and you say I can't eat the chicken this or that, slice it and put it in your dehydrator and store it in the dehydration uh, mylar bags. Uh, getting a dehydrator is a really good uh, piece of equipment to have for your for all the preppers. Well, um, the timeline I see happening is uh, we're going to have an election which Obama's going to try to steal or they're going to have a disaster that they're going to try to make the best of, whether it's the swine avian flu or a bank holiday or God knows what. I expect that even if, if Obama, if Romney doesn't pull a cat out of a, a, a rabbit out of a hat and actually do what he's supposed to do because there's people protesting how poorly he's running this election, if we do get stuck with another term of Obama, his, his uh, presidency will be disputed even on the voter rolls in Arizona and elsewhere. Uh, Romney, if he comes back, will have to come back very conservative with somebody like uh, Ryan or somebody else from the Tea Party movement like uh, uh, Sarah Palin. We're going to start seeing the move toward what I call austerity on top of the idea of 
some of the good things. I think the austerity fascism is not a good thing because it'll contract credit further. And uh, you're not going to solve the problem with just taxes. You need to actually wipe off debt off the banks. You need to stop printing money like it's going out of style and loaning it to countries, including oil countries and Europe and so on, like it's, uh, you know, like our, we're the printing press for the planet, which is craziness. Um, we also need to stop uh, foreign wars. Uh, it's obvious that the powers that be want to get us embroiled into a war in Syria and Iran, which means more of our ships will go to the bottom of the Mediterranean because the Russians have given advanced weapons, and the Syrians don't want to start a war because they know that, by and large, yes, they'll cause us a lot of trouble, but we'll just destroy them. And that's Here we go. That, Sun protection, yeah. UV exposure wristbands. Fourteen for sixteen dollars. Fourteen for sixteen dollars. That's a good deal. Where do you buy them? Uh, it's on Amazon. Oh yeah, really? Wow. Yeah. So you did. Yeah, you followed the advice. <laughs> Is it reusable? Um. No, I'm, I'm just... Okay, so, and John, I want to ask you a kind of a completely different question. Uh, when you brought all these stories out, and you, you have a very balanced approach as a forensic investigator journalist, do you, were you a little bit uh, kind of uh, accosted by a lot of people, including uh, Kerry Cassidy, who went off and said, oh, yeah, yeah, Deagle reported this, and John Moore reported that, and it's all going to happen. I'm thinking, no, no, you took a balanced approach. You said, we're getting into multiple well, sources. I my, my balance reports ends up being misinterpreted. Exactly. The same as here. And yeah. I find it, uh, what I tell people is, check it out yourself, and after you check it right. out, go and pray. Right. We know that at the very least what's happening is the government preparing for something real bad, and they're spending tons of our money to do it. They're also not telling the public what's going on, whether it's radiation from Fukushima, the danger of an earthquake on San Andreas, or anything else going on. We know that, the, by and large, the population are in La La Land. They're not preparing for having, you know, three weeks of water, food, self-protection. They're not prepared for anything. I mean, right. if the power went out, and, the, and, and even if the water goes, and people don't understand this, in the cities, the water authority has to stop putting out water because the toilets of all the toilets in the city and your pipes to your home will back up with sewage because they can't process the sewage from the sewage exactly. treatment plants. So the problem is not just the water problem, the problem is your home will become a septic sewer backup place. So here in the country where we have septic fields, we're fine. We'll have plenty of water. They can keep pumping the water. We'll be fine. But if you're in the city, oh my God. So I tell, one of the first things I tell people, if you're living in a big city in 2012, you need to get up. You need to get out to the periphery. You need to also start making plans. Exactly. So you can, Answering Ann's question, they're one-time use. You use one time and throw them away. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they change color and get fried like they a do. radio yeah, dosimetry card, right? And when they're light pink, you know, they tell you get more protection when they turn well, yellow. Well, you get out of the sun or cover up. Okay. Yeah, so in good. other words, when they turn pink, you're going to turn red. <laughs> 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 so um, anything to add, uh, Anne, in this situation? Because we had a little more time this week to kind of, kind of focus on these issues and kind of uh, bring out the truth for people. Well, I cannot impress on people how how di disastrous a uh, Carrington event uh, would be, and uh, the government seems to be preparing for that. They've created but, bunkers for their continuity of government people. But they didn't harden the power grids. Uh, Lisa Murkowski, the senator, blocked the bill passed by Congress, and the Senate otherwise would have passed it without Lisa Murkowski blocking it for a green energy bill uh, three years ago. Uh, Congress needs to not be back uh, in summer vacation. You'd be back in session to deal with all these issues like Iran, Syria, uh, the drought across America, and a financial meltdown in Europe. This is craziness. It's not time to be home watching the Olympics or bar barbecuing in the backyard or shaking hands and, and kissing babies. It's the time to actually do their job. Absolutely. Well, Amazing. That was fun. This is the Liberty Man signing off. Again, the uh, LibertyMan.com is the website, 7 to 9 a.m., Monday to Friday on the Republic Radio. Ann Morrison, our scientist, homeland-defense-number4u.com. We'll be back again on Monday, race through the weekend, Sunday evening encore.